Hi gang, Scott here. In this video, we're going to talk about grunge, uh, not 1990s rock. If you were looking for that, I'm sure there's a different channel. The grunge filter in on one effects. This adds a gritty, detailed look to your photos, and it has its place in your workflow for certain types of photos. So we'll go over what the filter is, the sliders that are there, and I'll show you an example of uh, how I occasionally turn to the grunge filter for my work. If you're interested in on one product, products, thinking about adding them to your workflow, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there that'll save you a bit of money. Let's have a look now at grunge. This is the type of photo that I would consider adding the grunge filter to. It's already got you know a gritty, abandoned kind of feel to it. So when I think about the grunge filter, I'm thinking about you know, graffiti or uh, abandoned structures. Uh, it could even just be you know, kind of a, a desolate kind of cityscape where you're wanting to add that that feeling of you know a little bit of darkness, a little bit of grit to your photos. It can work for portraits as well, like you know environmental portraits or uh, athletic uh, portraits. So if you're doing portrait work, maybe you want to incorporate grunge. But let me get this filter added here so we can have a look at what it offers us. You can see already straight away it's changed the photo. By default there is a 50 percent I guess we'll say amount of grunge added to this image and let's just toggle it off and on and see what kind of happened here. So before the grunge and after. Right, things got darker. It's like um, let's take a look at our levels as we change this before and after. Before and after. You see that shift to the left on the histogram before and after. A lot of the mid-tones and the lower mid-tones, things just got a little darker. And there's a bit of detail being added as well. That's the fundamental of the grunge filter. As with all of our filters, we have, you know, Arkham, which is really over the top. It's like kind of like your, your Batman kind of thing. And as you hover through, you'll see some that have softness, like this frumpy one. You have grunge, you have grunge with glow. This is a nice one here, just enough darkness. That's a nice little touch. Lighter, softer than the R, strong things. Let me stick with, with the normal, the default, so we can see how things work, right? Our amount sliders really are main control. This is what we will mostly be working with with grunge. And for this scene, I actually kind of like it pumped up a little bit more. I'll also want some detail. Now, we have lots of different ways of adding detail in Photo Raw. Here, I consider detail in the grunge filter as kind of a convenience slider. In fact, most of the other sliders in grunge are there for your convenience. These are things that you might want to add with a grunge look, so they're just available to you right away. Now, if you want this to be less saturated and more about the texture and the detail, we have saturation, we can take that down. If for whatever reason the grunge was too dark or too bright, you have your brightness slider to kind of compensate for amount, right? As we add more, the photo gets darker. If you're liking the grunge look, but it's a little bit too dark, you can pump brightness up some. And those are the fundamental sliders. Really, for me, I pay attention to the amount slider, get my look doing good, I'll play with detail. And then if I need to do further adjustments, like more detail in certain places, I'll turn to other tools like dynamic contrast for that level of work. Now the last two sections, glow and film grain. Let's start with glow. We have a single amount slider. It just adds some glow. And by default, it's this mode of light. And these are our blending modes. And it, it makes it kind of a, a, a filmy feel. That to me, for this photo, doesn't make sense. But we have other options, darken, screen, multiply, these things like that. You know, um, the overlay is is pretty good, but for for glow that might make sense for an environmental portrait, uh, especially this this default lighten one. But honestly, I'll leave that alone. And if I want a glow look to go along with the grunge, I'll use the dedicated glow filter. And I've got a separate video that explains how that filter all works. Same idea for film grain. Now you may want to add some grain. Let me push this up like really far. I don't even know if we'll be able to see that because of all the all the detail in this photo already. Yeah, this is like next to impossible to see this film grain in such a uh, detailed image already here. 
but we have film grain again I think this is more for your environmental portrait grungy crowd but once again there is a dedicated film grain filter that gives you more control you can choose the type of grain simulating a film stock you have your amount and size controls but the film grain filter itself if you use that separately you've got more control and you've got an individual mask so when you think about it like I will work with grunge to control the main options amount detail brightness saturation and that's kind of the order I usually go in amount detail brightness saturation do that with grunge if I need to do any masking I'm doing it for just these controls if I want glow I want film grain I'm gonna reach for those other dedicated filters right we have both of those here right we've got film grain and glow hey look at that they're, they're a triplet they're all right here for you and the reason is with the individual filters you have individual masks you can treat your subjects differently in your photo more grain less grain more glow less glow coupling that with grunge so really this is the fundamentals of grunge it adds darkness and it can add detail and depending on the photo it, uh, it can accent it and make it uh, interesting and more visually appealing. Hope you found the video useful. You got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.